Here's just a really quick demo of uh, resistance. Um, here's a battery that I'm going to be replacing. Uh, it's not good enough to start the car, but it does have some amps still. And here are the two uh, terminals. If you took these two and shorted them out, you'd get the full. Um, well, the cold cranking amps on this battery is rated at 690, um, and that's at zero degrees Fahrenheit. 32 degrees is 820, and it's been outside for a while. And you know, I have this cover around it. It's probably about 32 degrees right now. I'm actually probably around 40 by now. And at that amount, I should be able to put out well over 820 amps. Not too many more, but at this point in the battery's life, I can probably only put out about maybe 500 amps max. Maybe less. Um, it went dead on over two nights. So it's already bad, but just as a little demo, if I were to short these two out through this thick wire, you'd get almost the full current of the battery. I'll try that actually real quickly. The battery is up there out of the way. It's not going to ignite any gases. It's been quite a while since I last charged it. Um, it's a dead battery, or not dead, but it's a bad battery, so it's really not doing much anymore. So the risk of sparks igniting gases are very low. It's, it's not any risk at all. I've seen somebody um, try to jump a battery like this uh, with posts on the top, and they took a jumper and put the negative on the positive and the positive on the negative. And that's, of course, two batteries in series short circuit, which means you can get, that's 24 volts you're shorting out at whatever the max amperage of the battery the, one of the two batteries is, which I think was probably about 400 amps on the jumper. And, um, yeah, there were some serious sparks. I mean, the whole thing was you couldn't even see for like a split second. All there were were sparks everywhere in the entire battery, and it didn't blow up. So, and this one has the side post or the side vents, and there's really no danger in that. Plus, I have it way down here, so there's, there's no risk. Plus, I am wearing safety glasses, so I'm just going to show you the resistant or the very low resistance and the st nice thick cable all right so really quickly i'll show you the amount of sparks i get i'm out of the way so there's some serious sparks some high current there now that's thick cable this is what six gauge no four gauge wire you can see right there four gauge um now that's almost no resistance, you can see what it did to the cable. It was pretty rough on the cable. Um, that was quite a few amps that went through that. And it could, you know, make pretty big sparks. Now if I take this wire here, it's, um, I don't know, maybe 8 feet long. And then at the end, I have it twisted. Which if it was 8, that would make it 16 feet of wire. And I'll short that up. Now that's, uh, let's see, this is probably about maybe 20 gauge wire. Now there's no, you know, there's no load in here. This is still technically short circuit. I have um, wire going just 16 feet. It's just direct short circuit, but through 20 gauge wire. So, if you're not thinking about resistance realistically, that person would think that it's the same thing as shorting it out, just like I did before. But I only get little sparks if I hold it down. You know, the wire starts to get warm. The whole length of the wire does. I'm not going to hold it here for quite some time. And, um, the little, you know, the sparks you get are very small. This is probably only about, I don't know, it only looks like 10 amps, 15 amps. I don't have any DC ham meters. Um, I only have an AC one. And this wire's, the whole length of the wire's pretty hot. You know, the sparks aren't real great from it. So, that's a good demo of the resistance in your average wire. Now, if I were to put wire just like this, this four, uh, four gauge wire, if I were to take, you know, 16 feet of that in order to do the same thing, that would have less resistance because of the fact that there's more, con there's more of the conductor. So that's just a little demo of why you need thicker wire for carrying more current. Very simple fact. Anybody into, uh, electricity knows this stuff, but this is just a good demo while I actually have a battery. Alright, let's check the state of charge. It was 12.63 before, which is supposed to be full charged and just after that little bit of messing around I have 12.55 that wasn't a whole lot of power I pulled um, so if you were to let's say uh, if this were to pull I don't know it probably looks like it was pulling maybe 15 amps maybe 20 um, so let's say you have a 30 amp breaker on wire like this if you have it on short cables like this going to let's say an auto amp amplifier inside your car 
Um, let's say if something did short out, this would be able to carry the current to pop that fuse. But if you had smaller wire like this going to your amp, um, it would actually become part of the load on the circuit instead of just a conductor. So that would make it on its own um, a resistor pretty much. And instead of popping the fuse, let's say it only is pulling 25 amps, it smokes out the wires and possibly catches on fire. So that's why you need the right gauge wire in your car. Even though it can carry that amount of current, it's going to get very hot. Um, so that's just a good demo there. Also, there's been some weird confusion with batteries. Um, as of people thinking that you can get shocked in 12 volts, well, you clearly saw me short out the two terminals, which would go to these. You know, I can touch both. You know, I'm not getting shocked. Of course, photonic conduction did a demo of that already, so that's nothing impressive. But, you know, no shocks. You never get shocked from a battery. The only way you can ever think you get shocked is if you have a... Let's say you're working with a tool to, uh, let's say, remove the posts. Taking off a battery like this, and this isn't quite long enough, but let's say it was. And you hit it, and you, you short it out, and then you're going to make those sparks that I showed earlier. Those sparks are going to burn you. You're going to get burned from it. Um, people are probably confusing that with actual getting shocked. The current's not going through your body, you're just getting burned by the molten metal that's coming off of the spark. So that's not to be confused with actually getting shocked. There's a major difference. You can burn yourself with anything, a stove, but you're not going to, you know, if you can burn yourself with this, but you're not going to get shocked from it. Some people say that you can, you can manage to get shocked from a battery. I don't know how if you can do it, but apparently people say they can do it. I don't know if I believe them, but, you know. Post a comment if I'm wrong. Alright, so that's it. Just a really short video. See you in the next one.